Welcome back, Zombie Slayers, to the final part, part six of my high round solo strategy guide for Nocturne and Titan. And uh, we are obviously in the Black Ops version of the game at this point, round 26, starting off here. And uh, we've got the Galil and the Thunder Gun. We've got Monkey Bombs as well at this point in the game. So we'll see how we go, and we're starting it off here in the spawn area. This is the area where we run our main zombie train. I'll probably be able to take out one or two zombies with a glil, but uh, before we're forced into running the train here. And it's kind of a figure of eight that you run uh, around these pillars and back around the sandbags. Just rinse and repeat. Uh, have the thunder gun out. If you run into trouble and get blocked off like I nearly did there, uh, don't be afraid to use it liberally. Uh, if you need to and you run out of ammo in the thunder gun, what you need to do is group up all 24 zombies in the wave, uh, take them to the help room and run them around while you hit the box again until you get it back, uh, provided you have enough points, which we don't have a lot of at this point because we just did that. Now, uh, let me talk about a few of the multiplayer strategies you can use on this map while we're watching this. The tried and tested uh, most common strategy people use in multiplayer in Nocturne Toten uh, is basically to get all four players up in the room above this one where the grenades are and basically at the very back of that room on the wall you can buy grenades so what people do is they'll get all the players in the game up in that one spot there's only one window on the right that the zombies come from and uh, what they do is they go through the help room at the start of the game and keep the stairs shut the stairs from spawn here shut. So that way you only have the zombies coming from in front and from the one window on the right uh, as you face um, as you face forward from the grenade area if you know what I mean. So that is the tried and tested camping strategy in multiplayer in the Mark from Totem and you can get to about round 25-30 uh, doing that if you have a fairly well coordinated group of players uh, that know what they're doing especially with mule kick uh, because mule kick will allow you to have uh, that little bit of extra ammo although some people do find it uh, causes uh, issues with swapping between weapons uh, but that's a whole other story now I don't use mule kick in Nocturne Toten on principle because I'm a little bit of a purist as I said earlier in this series but uh, probably a more effective camping strategy than that one is to actually get all your players in the help room uh, and keep the help, help room door shut as we have done in this game. And then you can have one player uh, watching the back window, another watching the side window, and uh, the other two guys watching the stairs. And that's probably going to get you a little bit further than the uh, grenade area camping spot because uh, worst case scenario if everyone goes down except for one guy at least he'll be able to run a kind of a train in the help room whereas you can't do that uh, effectively up in the grenade room you can run a train there but it's very very difficult getting past that one pillar up there uh, without getting blocked off uh, as you come up here that pillar on the, on the left uh, as we turn around now as you may have realized, uh, we've switched across to World at War gameplay here, just to show you guys what's going on in the World of War version of this map. And uh, still using the flamethrower here, of course, and this is the main weapon that you'll use to get to the high rounds in World at War. World at War, of course, only having the 24 zombies per round, it uh, you do get through the rounds much, much quicker than the Black Ops version of Narcton Toten. Okay guys, now just to, just to remind you guys, uh, this is the very last of the uh, official Zombies maps uh, that I have uh, done this uh, solo strategy guide for. This now completes the uh, series for all the maps. Uh, so if you guys have not seen my other uh, high round solo series for all the other maps, uh, I'll put the links in the description of this video. And... Uh, you may find something in there that you haven't uh, used before, some tips and tricks, tactics, strategies for solo gameplay in all maps in Zombies. 
And it's basically a complete game from round 1 to round 30. So you can see all different stages of gameplay and uh, an effective high round strategy for each map. But what I'm going to do moving forward uh, now that I've completed all the official maps is I'm going to show you guys some gameplay from custom zombies maps on PC. Now what I'm going to do is uh, show you some gameplay, uh, give you an overview of the map, basically open up all the areas and show you the easter eggs and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to go to round 30 on every map though. And as well as that I'm going to give you a review of each custom map. So I'll probably give you something like a 5 star rating system uh, based on different factors. And I'll let you know which maps are the good maps, which maps are the you know, not so good maps to play, and some reasons for that as well. Uh, so, uh, if you guys are interested, uh, the first custom zombies map that I'll do will, will probably be in about two or three weeks. I'm still waiting on getting my uh, custom PC back. Uh, I had to send the graphics card back to get replaced after it started crashing on me. But uh, that should hopefully happen in the next week or so, and after that I'll be bringing you the first of the custom Zombies maps playthroughs. If you guys want to suggest some maps, just let me know. There's about, uh, I don't know how many, at least 30, 40 maps. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm probably not going to show you each and every one of them, but uh, some of the better ones, some of the more unique ones. Uh, some of them look a little bit uh, trashy, to be honest, uh, and others are pretty epic, so there's a mixture there. Maybe eventually I'll even create my own map, uh, we'll have to wait and see. So as well as Custom Zombies, what I'm going to bring you guys is the usual uh, games as well. Uh, some challenge, uh, some challenge games from the regular custom, the sorry, the regular zombies maps like Ascension and whatnot. And I've got some ideas for what I want to do there as well. Uh, hopefully, some unique stuff that you haven't seen from other channels. And I'm also going to be bringing some uh, Gears of War 3 stuff and some Modern Warfare 3 Survival, most likely, on new maps to come out. Uh, I'll be showing you some Minecraft stuff as well, and uh, showing some epic stuff that I've built, as well as uh, just exploring and stuff like that, for those of you guys that are into that. And I'm also going to be bringing some PC games like uh, uh, Killing Floor, which looks pretty awesome, it's a similar, it's a sort of similar to Zombies. And uh, I had uh, had a play of that the other night, that was pretty awesome. And I might even play some games like Skyrim and stuff like that eventually on PC as well. Let's wait and see. So if you guys have a particular game that you'd like to see me play, let me know. And uh, we'll see what it can do for you. Uh, another new game that's come out that I'm pretty excited about is SX SSX. <laughs> Uh, which I used to play heaps on uh, PlayStation 2. And uh, that's a snowboarding game for those of you that don't know. It's kind of over the top game where you do massive tricks and stuff like that. And it's, it's a heap of fun. So I was really looking forward to that coming out on Xbox 360. And uh, I'll definitely be getting that. And uh, maybe show you guys uh, a little bit of that. Probably not heaps of it, but uh, just a little bit. And, uh, yeah, basically anything else that comes out that looks interesting. So I'm not going to be just zombies on this channel, obviously. I like to mix it up a little bit. I might even bring you some retro games. I've got uh, some plans for that. I'm not going to tell you what they are at this point. Uh, going to be a bit of a surprise. But uh, some, some of the retro games I used to play when I was uh, young, I'm going to be uh, showing you some of that stuff. For better or worse. <laughs> so I don't know how many of you guys watched my Zork playthrough, but uh, it's not going to be quite as, uh, it's not going to be quite the text adventure game style, but it's going to be more like Commodore 64 and stuff like that. Okay, so anyway, we're at round 29 here, uh, still on the World of War version of this map. I'm going crazy with the flamethrower. And as I said before, this game I actually went to uh, around 115. That was the uh, target that I had in mind for my 115th video uh, special. 
Uh, and then I committed suicide, basically. I cooked a grenade right at the end of the round. So that's how the game ended eventually. And a lot of these games I've shown you guys up to round 30, I did, I did go on to quite high rounds afterwards, but... Uh, I haven't really showed you guys any of those really, really high rounds too much. I might show you some of that stuff a little bit later on. There's a whole heap of stuff that I recorded ages ago that has never seen the light of day. Uh, because I'm quite busy with my, um, with my work. I work full time during the week and I only have uh, time like in the evenings and on the weekend to produce these videos. So. I like to produce quality videos. I don't like to produce just any old uh, rubbish gameplay. And uh, for that reason, I put a lot of time into my videos. And I'm not producing heaps and heaps of videos uh, every day like some channels. But hopefully the stuff that I'm bringing out is uh, pretty good quality gameplay. Alright, so that is the end of round 29, and there's just one round left, and then we'll finish off this uh, this video. But, uh, looking back on some of the strategies that I've done for some of the maps, uh, particularly Shangri-La uh, is one of, the, one of the maps that I, I could probably revisit, and uh, Shino Numa, the Black Ops version, I could revisit uh, the strategies on those. A little bit because I have improved on the original strategies that I did although the strategies that I've put up are very effective to getting the high rounds uh, what uh, has been improved later in the strategy that I use on those videos on those uh, sorry on those maps is the speed they get through the rounds so you can have a very safe strategy that will get you through the rounds to, the, to basically as high a round as, as you want uh, but it can take a long, long time. So the best possible strategy will get you through the rounds in the most efficient, i.e. quick time possible, but also in a reasonably safe manner. And uh, that uh, is basically what you look for in a good strategy in a Zombies map. So in Shangri-La, the strategy that I used was quite safe, but also took a long, long time to get through the rounds. So I have improved on that since then. And in Shino Numa, I have improved that strategy a little bit as well uh, to be slightly safer and quicker as well in between uh, using the trap. But uh, there are only slight tweaks and changes, so it's probably not worth doing a whole new strategy uh, series on those. So as you can see in World of War, basically each round, even in the higher rounds, this is, isn't really a super high round, but uh, it gives you a bit of an idea. Uh, they'll only take about five or six minutes per round to get through, because as we said, there's only 24 zombies. And the flamethrower does kill the zombies even at round 100, uh, more or less at the same rate. Now, by the end of this particular game where I got to round 115, um, I think I had about 890,000 points. So you could get a fair few points from using the flamethrower. And uh, because there's 24 zombies per round, I had about uh, 2,500 um, kills as well. And coincidentally, 115 headshots all in all. So it was a pretty good run, I probably should have seen how far I could get, but I just wanted to get on the leaderboard at round 115. So that was uh, mission accomplished. So now I'm on the leaderboards uh, for Solo, World of War, Narked, round 115, and on uh, World at War, Shino Numa, round 1337, which is pretty cool. Alright guys, well that is pretty much the end of my high round solo strategy guide for Narked Run Tone. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, for now, it is a slippage amount. Thanks for watching.